from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hello, welcome to theCUBE. We're here at DataWorks Summit 2018 in Berlin, Germany. I'm James Kobielus. I'm the lead analyst for Big Data Analytics within the Wikibon team of SiliconANGLE Media. Uh, our guest is John Kreisa. He's the VP for Marketing at Hortonworks, the, of course, the uh, host company of DataWorks Summit. John, it's great to have you. Thank you, Jim. Great to you, be here. We go long back, so yeah. you know yeah. it's, it's always uh, great to reconnect to you guys at Absolutely. Hortonworks. You guys are on a roll. It's yeah. been seven years now, I think, since you were founded. Yep. I remember the founding yep. of Hortonworks. I remember when it splashed in the Wall Street Journal, yeah. like, oh wow, this big data thing, this Hadoop <laughs> thing is actually you know, it's a, it's a, it's a market. It's a yeah, segment, and right. you guys have built it. You you're, you know, you and your your competitors, mm -hmm. your partners, your ecosystem continues to grow. You yeah. guys went IPO a few years ago. Yes. Your latest numbers are pretty good. You're mm -hmm. continuing to grow in revenues and mm -hmm. customer acquisitions. Your deal sizes are growing. So Hortonworks remains on a roll. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like you to, to to talk right now, John. Give us a sense for you know, where Hortonworks is at in terms of engaging with the marketplace, mm -hmm. in terms of trends that you're seeing, in sure. terms of how you're addressing them. But talk about, first of all, about DataWorks Summit. How many attendees do you have from how many countries? Just give us sort yeah. of the layout of the show. Sure, and I don't have all the final counts yet. This is year six of the show. This too. is year six yeah. in Europe, absolutely, yeah. thank you. Um, so it's great, we've moved it around different locations, great venue, great host city here in Berlin, super excited about it. I know we have uh, representatives from more than 51 countries. Ooh. If you can think about that, drawing from a really broad set of countries, well beyond, as you know, because you've interviewed uh, some, of the, some of the folks, beyond just Europe, right? We've had them from South America, US, Africa, just in Asia as well. So yes. really a broad swath of the open source and big data community, which is great. Um, uh, final attendance is going to be you know 1,250 to 1,300 range. Good. Getting the final numbers, but a great size conference. Um, the energy level's been really great. Yeah. Um, the sessions have been you know over oversubscribed, standing room only in many of these popular sessions. So you know the community's strong. I think that's the thing that we really see here and that yeah. we're really uh, you know, continuing to invest in. It's something that Hortonworks was founded around. You referenced the founding and, and you know, driving the community forward and, and investing is something that you know, has been part of our mantra since we started and it remains that way today. Right, so um, what trends, first of all, what is Hortonworks now? How does Hortonworks position itself? Mm -hmm. You're not, I mean, you're, clearly Hadoop is your foundation, but yep. you just like, Cloudera, MapR, you guys have all continued to evolve to address mm -hmm. a broader range of use cases yep. with a deeper stack of technology with fairly extensive partner ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a beast is Hortonworks? It's an <laughs> elephant, <laughs> but what kind of an elephant is it? We're an elephant, we're riding on the elephant, I'd say. Um, so we're a global data management company, yeah. right? That's what we're helping organizations do. Um, really the end-to-end -end life cycle of their data, helping them manage it regardless of where it is, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, really through a hybrid data architectures. And that's really how we've seen the market evolve is, you know, we started off in terms of our strategy with the platform based on Hadoop, as you said, to uh, store, process, and analyze data at scale, right? The kind of fundamental use case for, for uh, Hadoop. Then as the company emerged, and as the market continued to evolve, we moved to and, and saw the opportunity really for capturing data from the edge, right? As IoT and kind of edge use cases emerged, it made sense for us to add to the to the platform and create the Hortonworks data flow. Apache NiFi and Apache so and NiFi HDF. Underneath. Yes. Exactly, HDF underneath, um, with associated additional open source projects in there, um, Kafka and some streaming and, and things like that. So that was now move data, capture data in motion, move it back and put it into the platform for those large data applications that organizations are building on the core platform. So sort of the next evolution, seeing great attach rates with that, the really strong interest in Apache NiFi you know, the meetup here for NiFi was oversubscribed, so really, really strong interest in that. Um, and then, the markets continue to evolve with cloud and cloud architectures, customers wanting to deploy in the cloud, and you know, you saw we had that poll yesterday in the general session about cloud, which really interesting results. Um, but, uh, 
we saw that there was really, companies were wanting to deploy in a hybrid way. Some of them wanted to move specific workloads to the cloud. Multi-cloud, public, private. Exactly uh, yeah. right, and um, multi-data center, right? But the like, majority of your customer deployments are on-prem. They mean, are. Rob Bearden, your, your CEO, I think he said in a recent article on SiliconANGLE that two-thirds of your deployments are on-prem. Uh, is that is that percentage going down over time? Is mm -hmm. more of your customers shifting towards a public cloud orientation? Yeah. <clears throat> Does Hortonworks worry about that? You've got partnerships mm -hmm. clearly with the likes of IBM yeah. and AWS and Microsoft mm -hmm. Azure and, and so forth. So, do you guys see that as an opportunity, as a worrisome trend? Yeah. Or? No, I see it very much as an opportunity, um, and that's because we do have customers who are wanting to put more workloads and run things in the cloud. However, there's still almost always a, a component that's going to be on-premise. And that creates you know, a challenge for organizations in order, how do they manage the security and governance and really the overall operations of, that, of those deployments as they're in the cloud and on-premise. And to your point, multi-cloud. And so you get some complexity in there around that deployment, and, how, and, and particularly with the regulations. We talked about GDPR earlier today. Oh, and by the way, the Data Steward Studio demo today mm -hmm. was really, really good. Oh, good. It showed that it's, uh, first of all, you, you cover the entire mm -hmm. range of core requirements mm -hmm. for compliance. Mm -hmm. So that was actually, that was the primary announcement at mm -hmm. this show, Scott. That's right. Now announced that. You demoed it today, I think you guys are off on, on, a, on a good start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we've gotten really, uh, no, thank you for that. We've gotten really good feedback on our data plane services strategy, right? Yeah. It provides that single oh, pane of glass. Did, 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 I should say to our, our, our viewers is that Data Steward Studio is the second of the services under the data plane, the Hortonworks data plane services portfolio. I'm that's sorry. right, yeah, no, that's going, exactly keep right. Keep going, yeah. Yeah, no, so, so you know, we saw that as, we see that as an opportunity. We think we're very strongly positioned in the market and being the first to bring that kind of solution to the customers and our large customers that we've been talking about and who've been starting to use data plane have been very, very positive. I mean, they see it as something that's going to help them really kind of maintain control over these deployments as they start to spread around, as they grow their, their uses of the, of the uh, thing. So, and it's built to operate across the multi-cloud, I noticed exactly as right. well, in terms of executing the uh, consent or withdrawal of consent that the uh, data subject makes through a, essentially what's a, what's a consent portal. So, that's right, yeah. that's right. And that, that was actually a very compelling demonstration in that, in that regard. It was good and they worked very hard on it. Um, yeah. the, uh, and, and I was speaking to an, an analyst yesterday and they were saying that they're, they're seeing increasing number of the customers wanting, enterprises wanting to do, have a multi-cloud strategy, right? They don't want to get locked into any one public cloud vendor. So, what they want is somebody who can help them maintain that common, common security and governance across their different deployments, mm -hmm. and they see data plane services as a way that's going to help them do that. So John, uh, how, how is Hortonworks, what's, what's your roadmap? How do you see the company and your go-to-market mm -hmm. evolving over the coming years in terms of geographies, mm -hmm. in terms of your focuses, mm -hmm. uh, focus in terms of the use cases and workloads yeah. that the Hortonworks uh, portfolio uh, addresses? How is that shifting? I mean, we, we mentioned, you mentioned the edge. Mm -hmm. um, AI, machine learning, deep learning. Mm -hmm. um, you are, uh, I think you're a reseller of IBM data science experience. DSX, yeah. that's right. So mm -hmm. do you see, let's just focus on that. Do, um, do you see more customers turning to Hortonworks and IBM mm -hmm. for a complete end-to-end -end pipeline for the ingest, mm -hmm. for the, the preparation of modeling and training and so forth, right. and deployment of operationalized AI and mm -hmm. so forth, is that something you see going forward as an evolution path for your I'd say capabilities? Yes. I'd say yes, long, long term or even in the short term. So they have to get their data, data house in order, if you yeah. will, before they get to some of those other things. So we're still, you know, and our strategy, Hortonworks strategy has always been focused on the, the platform aspect, right? Yes. The, the data at rest platform, data in motion platform, and now platform for, for managing common security and governance across those different um, deployments. Building on that is the data science, machine learning, and AI opportunity. But our strategy there, as opposed to trying to do it ourselves, is to partner. So we've got the strong partnership with IBM, resell their DSX product, and also other partnerships around to deliver those other capabilities like machine learning and AI. Um, from our partner ecosystem, which mm -hmm. you referenced, we have over 2,300 partners. So very, very strong ecosystem. And so we're going to stick to our strategy of the platforms enabling that, mm -hmm. which will subsequently enable data science and machine learning AI on top. Mm, okay. And then our stra if you want me to talk about our strategy Please. in terms of growth. Um, so we already operate globally. We've got offices, I think, in 19 different countries. 
Um, so we've got, you know, we're really covering the globe in terms of the demand for Hortonworks products. And Where, where's the fastest growing market in terms of regions for Hortonworks? Yeah, I mean, international. APAC? Yeah, international generally is our fastest growing region, big, faster than, than the US. Um, but we're seeing, yeah, very strong growth in APAC actually. Mm. So um, India, you know, ASEAN countries, you know, Singapore, and then up and through to, uh, to Japan. There's a lot of growth out mm. in, the, in the ASEAN region. And, you know, they're sort of moving directly to digital transformation projects at really large scale, big banks, telcos, and you know, from a workload standpoint, it's actually, this, I'd say the patterns are very similar to what we've seen. You know, I've been at Hortonworks for six and a half years, as it turns out, and the patterns we saw initially in terms of adoption in the US became the patterns we saw in terms of adoption in, in uh, Europe, and now those patterns of adoption are the same in, in Asia. So it, it really, once a company realizes they need to you know, either drive out operational costs or build new data applications, you know, the patterns tend to be the same, whether it's retail, tra uh, financial services, telco, manufacturing, you know, that you can sort of replicate those as they move forward. Hmm. So, okay, so going forward, uh, how is Hortonworks evolving as a company mm -hmm. um, in terms of, um, now that, for example, with GDPR, data stewards, mm -hmm. data governance is a strong focus going forward. Mm -hmm. Are you shifting your model in terms of your your target customer away from the data engineers, the Hadoop mm -hmm. cluster managers of you know who are still very much the center of it, towards more data governance, mm -hmm. towards more that's really more business analyst yeah. level <coughs> of focus. Is that do you see Hortonworks shifting in in that direction yeah, in terms I wouldn't, of your I focus? Is a good question. Market? Yeah, the message and everything. I would say it's not it's not a, sh a shifting as much as an expansion. Mm -hmm. So we definitely are continuing to invest in the core platform on, in Hadoop, and you would have heard of some of the changes that are coming in the core Hadoop 3.0 and 3.1 platform here. Um, Alan and others can talk about those details and in Apache NiFi. But to your point, as we bring and have brought Data Steward Studio and, and uh, Data Plane services online, that allows us to address a different user within the organization. And so it's really an expansion. We're not deinvesting in any of the other things. It's really, here's another way and a natural evolution of the way that we're helping organizations solve data problems. That's great. Well, thank you. This has been John Kreisey. He's the VP for Marketing at Hortonworks. Uh, I'm James Kobielis of uh, Wikibon Silicon Angle Media here at DataWorks Summit 2018 in Berlin. And it's been great, John, and thank you very much for uh, coming on theCUBE. Great, thanks for your time.